Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm the group leader of group two. And these are my group members. They are Dong Li Jie, Eliza Ling Jing Yi, Hong Qi Xing, and Joel Sunan Chi. All of us uh, came from 4S1, and our class teacher is Madam Noraini. This is our content. Our content uh, con uh, involves acknowledge, uh, introduction, findings, conclusion, evidence, and references. Okay, I would like to express my deep appreciation to all those who provided me with the possibility of completing this report. A special thanks to our physics teacher, Ms. Noraini, whose contribution in providing suggestions and encouragement helped me coordinate this project, especially in writing this report. Furthermore, I would like to acknowledge with much appreciation the crucial role of our parents, who gave us the permission to use all the required equipment and the necessary materials needed to deeper this assignment, which is modified cluster homes. Props, my, props to my teammates who helped me assemble the different aspects of the assignment and for giving suggestions to. Last but not least, I'm grateful for the guidance given by other supervisors as well as the panel, especially in building the modified model. Our model has no doubt improved thanks to their comments and advice. Come to introduction. Overheating is the main problem of climatic design in warm and humid climates. Compared to hot, dry area with high temperature, warm and humid climate has high relative humidity and small diurnal temperature difference caused to this problem. Solar energy absorbed by the building envelope and penetrates, penetrates through opening rays the indoor air temperature. As it materials had different material property at alongside heat from solar energy called as thermal conductivity. Heat in a building skin originate by three mechanisms: external heat, internal heat, and ventilation. Solar radiation straight on building envelope generates external heat gains either to opaque or transparent materials such as window and openings. Excessive heat in buildings cause discomfort to the occupants in tropical climate. Tropical rainforest climate receive higher solar radiation and terrestrial radiation reaching the building envelopes contributes to this problem. The design of the building should be more concerned on reducing this heat. There are four classical thermal environmental parameters to predict human thermal sensation, humidity, air temperature, air velocity, and mean radiant temperature. Measuring these parameters help to identify the thermal sensation and variation of building design made to improve the indoor thermal environment. This is important to create comfortable and healthy environment indoor environment, which is one of the criteria considered in sustainable building assessment tools. So this is our findings. We had done some research about facts and problems related to extreme climate change on cluster homes. These findings are helpful for us to analyze how to solve the, these problems, especially to prevent the uh, effect of hot weather on residents who live in the cluster homes. Based on 2020 state of climate service, between year 1970 and year 2019, about 79% of disasters worldwide involve weather, water, and climate-related hazard. This indicates that increase of the temperature can lead 
to bad disasters. Moreover, a popular phenomenon regarding the rise of temperature El Nino phenomenon has occurred in many countries, including Malaysia. Generally, El Nino phenomenon will last for six to 18 months. As a result, residents of terrace cluster homes experience extreme heat. The line graph below shows the changes of temperature when the El Nino phenomenon occurred. There are a lot of effects of El Nino. First is the, uh, it limited the outdoor activities caused by uh, animals, hot weather, and haze. And it also caused health issues such as Addis and malaria diseases, and also caused the air pollution. Dry and hot conditions lead to forest burning and cause haze. Obviously, the temperature rises very much compared to the normal day. Upon this problem, we decided to build to building material with high specific heat capacity and environmental friendly to modify the cluster homes. First of all, we would like to use hand bricks instead of concrete to build up the wall of cluster homes. This is due to the difference of thermal properties between, between them. The bar chart below shows that hand bricks have higher specific heat capacity than concrete, that is 1,600 joule per Celsius per kilogram to 1,000 joule per Celsius per kilogram. Besides that, hand bricks are durable, which can last up to hundreds of years. Hand bricks are environmentally friendly because they can be recycled. Thus, we decided to choose hand bricks for our walls. Next, we had a roof eaves design. The purpose is to provide sunshade for interior shape space. As a, as a consequence, almost 51% direct sunlight was protected. Hence, we had chosen polycarbonate as the major materials for the roof eaves. The polycarbonate has its height specific heat capacity, which is 1,300 joule per Celsius per kilogram. Therefore, this polycarbonate helped to maintain cool surroundings through getting hot slowly. The picture below displays an extended roof that was made up of polycarbonate. After that, we think that tiled roof will cooperate well with other building structures under the circumstances. We will never have to install sorry another type of roofing again because it is long lasting for about 100 years. In addition, its heavy thermal mass of tile will help regulate indoor temperature and they are environmentally friendly as well. To illustrate, here is a picture brought from uh, the internet showing the tile roof patterns. Meanwhile, we would like to choose rubble tiles for installation of the floor. Rubble flooring is necessary for many purposes such as reducing vibration and shock absorption. At the same time, the specific heat capacity of rubble tiles is 2000 joule per cent degree Celsius per kilogram, which makes it difficult to raise its temperature. So we can reduce the effect of heat on the cluster homes. Then for all of the windows is in cluster homes, we would like to use tinted glass. Tinted glass, also known as heat absorbing glass, is made by adding color pigments to raw materials in the float process. Commonly, the color would be gray, dark gray, green, or blue. As the glass gets denser, the amount of light transmittance reduces. In addition, we were, inspi we were inspired by the, the water spring sprinkle system. Therefore, we decided to install an automatic sprinkler on the roof to achieve the cooling effect. The water will be pumped out when the surroundings are too hot or during afternoon. As a result, 
Most of the heat can be absorbed by the water without raising much temperature because of the high specific heat capacity of water that is 4,200 Joule per degree Celsius per kilogram. Besides that, we would like to generate greenery ideas. In order to save space, we decided to plant a banana tree in the backyard of each house. As the plants carry out the evaporation process, the surrounding temperature would be reduced. Furthermore, we also install windmills in front of the houses for ventilation purposes. This is the estimation of the expenses. Handbrake, 108 ringgit per meter square. Polycarbonate, 13 ringgit per kilogram. Rubber tiles, 20 ringgit per pieces. Roof tiles, 400 per meter square. Tinted glass, 65 ringgit per 500 to 1000 meter squares. Total is around 4,300 ringgit. To sum up these ideas, we had planned to build up a model of modified cluster homes. We use materials like cardboard, color papers, and melting boards to illustrate our opinions. These materials have been gathered by our team mates. The expenses are shown as below. Cardboard, which is 50 cents. You glue, 25 ringgit. Acrylic paint, 5 ringgit. Printing, 1 ringgit. Pin, and 70, pin is 70 cents. Total is 32 ringgit and 20 cents. Our conclusion is to implement reflective and radiative approaches in roofing system will enhance environmental sink for heat dissipation, thereby minimizing the effect of heat penetrating, as well as contributing to the reduction of internal gains through day lighting and appliances. However, their efficiency depends on the building type, the occupancy patterns, and climatic boundaries. For example, air temperature, relevant humidity, velocity, and direction of wind, which differs from day to day. Therefore, the effectively improved heat rejection from buildings by natural means, the physical character characteristic of the building should be sufficiently understood by the designer. Moreover, selecting an appropriate technique may result in an unpleasant indoor environment. If these approaches could be effectively applied in the design, and construction process of a building, the sustainability would be implemented. Okay, after gathering the materials needed, we started to build out the model based on our design. We used about three days to complete our work. On the first day, we set up the foundation of the cluster homes and the wall. The next day, we continued to doing 
to do the unfinished foundation and then prepare some handmade furniture for the third day. While the last day, we decorated all the details of interior design and roofing. Finally, we painted the roof and the model was done. This is our model. Now, Lijie is uh, just now, Lijie was showing the model, but uh, the camera cannot uh, turn. Uh, so she can only show us like this. Uh. This is our interior design of our home. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, group two. Okay, very good, meaning we have done uh, a lot of research on this. Okay. So we also very grateful to you that we learned something new, new knowledge, okay, and also new information.